friends, it's Jessie here. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new here. In today's video, we are going to be writing out the budget for the first paycheck in August using my paycheck budget principle. I am so excited to finally be in my principles here. You guys know that I have been using the Budget Mom principles for a couple of years now, and I absolutely love those and still highly recommend them. I have them um, linked in my description box below, but I recently started designing my own principles and I made some changes, kind of took some inspiration from the Budget Moms worksheets and some inspiration from other worksheets that I've seen, and I just sort of put my own spin on them and really customized them for my own personal use. So I'm really excited to be using my August paycheck budget sheet. Um, I do have all of my printables available on Etsy if you are interested in um, purchasing them, downloading them, and printing them yourself. Um, it's just a PDF file that you can print really easily at home. Um, I have a whole bundle for August if you're interested in getting like the whole bundle, all of my worksheets, or you can just get this paycheck budget worksheet um, individually. It's this really fun, bright yellow color that I think is perfect for August. So if you're interested in that, I do have the link down below. For now, I'm just going to start filling this out. So I have my principle here, and what I have done is just printed out this on 28 pound paper, punched it and put it into my Happy Planner disc bound system. I have my erasable pen here from Parku, and we're just going to start writing out this budget. So the paycheck date is August 3rd. I'm just going to write that in up here. It's my husband's first paycheck for August. If you're not familiar with how we budget, we budget paycheck to paycheck, not necessarily by month. So if we were budgeting by month, right, the very first day of our budget would be August 1st, but my husband's first paycheck in August doesn't arrive until August 3rd, so that's the date that we are starting with. And then I have this income section here. You guys know by now, if you are familiar with my videos, that I don't disclose my husband's income, um, but I am going to fill some of this in with you all. So my husband's income is going to be paycheck number one, which we are just going to leave blank for privacy reasons. He has asked that I not disclose his income, so I don't do that. But the other income we are working with this week is some rollover income. So we had some money left over last week um, and weeks previous. Anytime that we sit and we write out a budget, we pay everything we need to pay, and then anything that is left over, we roll over into the next week and the next month. And that just gives us a little bit of extra money to work with. It gives us a little bit of wiggle room in our budget, and that works out really well for us as well. So I'm not going to include that rollover number here either, just again for privacy reasons, um, but that is part of the income we are working with this week. And the last um, income source that we have this week is Etsy. As I mentioned, I put my printables up on Etsy and you guys have been buying them. I so appreciate that. So I have a little bit of income to work with from Etsy. Um, I need to pull in my phone here actually to get a total. Give me just a second. Okay, so the Etsy income I am working with is $56 and 58 cents so thank you all so much for shopping my little store i appreciate it i hope you guys are all loving your printables so yeah those three sources of income combined would give us a total which i'm going to leave blank again for privacy reasons but that number then would get written in here in my total section under income. So I would put my income total here, the budgeted amount, and then when all of the income actually comes in, I could go in and put in the actual amount. I'm going to fill that in off camera just for the sake of keeping my husband's income private, but that would be the next step in this setup. So now we can start talking about where the money is going. Let me zoom you guys in a little bit more. 
So the next category that we have here is my checking category. So under this section, this is going to be everything listed out that I'm going to leave in my checking account so that I can pay it through my debit card or directly, you know, as a direct payment, that sort of thing. Um, we do a lot of our budgeting in cash. We pull out cash for our cash envelopes and our sinking funds, but sometimes you can't use cash. Sometimes you just don't want to use cash, and that's where this section comes in. So we're going to start out with my bills for the week, and to get those, I'm actually going to just flip back to my August calendar here. You can see the payday my husband receives on August 3rd here and we are going to look and find any bills that fall within this pay period. So after this payday, before this payday. We have just a couple here. So I have my Boost Mobile bill and my Camper bill. So that's going to get written in here first under checking. So Boost is our phone bill. We have four lines of unlimited talk, text, and data. And we pay $130 a month. It's a great deal. It's one of these pay-as-you-go services. I really like it. Um, we've had Boost Mobile for years and years now. And so that's what we are going to budget for that. And then the other bill we had was our camper. And our camper payment is $200 a month. So that's going to take care of that. And the only other thing we are going to leave under this checking section is our gasoline. So we did gas in cash for a really long time and I discovered that I just hate it. I hate having to go into the store and pay cash and then go back into the store to get any change. It's just a hassle. So what I've been doing as of late is just leaving the gas money in the bank and swiping my debit card when I want to fill my tank. So for gas, we are going to budget $50. That's about what it takes to fill my Subaru Forester from empty, with gas prices being what they are. So that's what we're going to do. And that's actually going to do it for this checking section. Now there is other money that I'm going to leave in my account, but that's going to be to make our extra debt payments, so that'll get written in here under this extra debt category. I know that it might be difficult to see that white text on the yellow background, so I apologize for that, but um, it's easy enough to see in person, and I just love this bright sunny yellow color. All right, so let's go ahead and add this up. So we have 130 plus 200 plus 50, for a grand total of $380 here in our checking account. So that's what's gonna get left in our checking account to cover these items. Moving on to the next section here of my principal, I have my cash envelopes. So this is all of the cash that we are going to pull out of the bank that's going to be spent this week. So we're gonna start out with um, my husband's spending. I always do my husband's spending in cash. That's what works really well for us. I can just give him the cash at the start of the week. He can use it as he sees fit, and when it's gone, it's gone. So we're going to budget $40 for that, as usual. Just like my husband, I also get spending money also in cash, and that's going to be $40 as well. <coughs> Excuse me. I wonder if I can zoom you guys in just a touch more. Alrighty, so then we have my son, Austin. Austin's 13. He does do some chores around the house to earn some allowance, and that's going to be $20. We have miscellaneous, which is just a miscellaneous 20. I stick in my wallet for anything else that comes up throughout the week. And lastly, we have our food for the week. I have been doing our grocery shopping and our eating out in cash as of late and really enjoying that. So for this, we are going to budget $200. This will cover any groceries that we buy, any eating out that we do, that sort of thing. So that's it for cash envelopes. 
we can go ahead and add this up as well. So 40 plus 40 plus 20 plus 20 plus 200 is 320 dollars so that's the cash i will pull out of the bank stick into my wallet and spend throughout the week we also do our sinking funds in cash so if you're not familiar with sinking funds sinking funds are essentially little mini savings accounts um, i pull the money out in cash just because that's the way i like to do it and then i stick it in a little accordion folder in my safe um, I have a dozen sinking fund categories. Right now, I'm trying to add at least a little bit of money to every single fund. For a while there, I was just kind of picking and choosing which funds were most important and adding money that way. But um, right now, we're adding a little bit to each fund every week. Um, some funds get more money than others. It just depends on their priority, right? But this is what's been working really well for me, so... We're going to keep it up. And this is the main reason I created my own printables was because the Budget Mom printables, while they are wonderful, they did not have enough spaces for my sinking funds. So I wasn't able to write everything in every week and it was just frustrating. So I have enough lines here now that I created my own printable so I can write everything out. Starting with my camping sinking fund. So our camping sinking fund took a pretty big hit this last week. We had a lot of camping expenses and we had to pay um, our camping electric bill for the month. So we're going to kind of build it back up again. We're going to add $50 to our camping fund. Next up, we have our car sinking fund. So the money that we stick in our car sinking fund covers anything, car maintenance, car tabs, that sort of thing. Um, so if we need an oil change, that comes out of our car sinking fund. If it's time to renew our car tabs, we, that comes out of our car sinking fund. Um, if we want to get a car wash, that will come out of our car sinking fund. Um, pretty much anything that's related to our vehicles that's not gasoline, since we covered gasoline over here. So that fund is doing pretty well right now, so we're just going to add... $5 to that fund just to so as not to neglect it and put nothing in there. We're just going to throw a five in there. Okay, next up we have celebrations and our celebration sinking fund is for um, covering any birthday gifts, celebrating various holidays, graduations, that sort of thing. Um, everything other than Christmas. Christmas has its own separate category, which I'll move on to next. But, you know, if we're celebrating Thanksgiving, we would pull the money for our Thanksgiving turkey out of celebrations. Um, if we're celebrating my best friend's daughter's birthday, which we just did this past week, I would pull the money out of here for um, her gift. So that's what celebrations is. And celebrations is going to get $10. Next up, we have Christmas. Christmas is a biggie, so Christmas is going to get $50. I'm a little bit behind on our Christmas savings, so I want to bulk that up a little bit this week. Next up, we have clothing. So much like camping, clothing got a pretty big hit this week. I went and took my son um, back to school shopping and we pulled money out of clothing and out of school expenses to cover his um, back to school clothes and his new backpack and everything. So those funds are both sitting empty right now. So um, I want to bulk them up a bit. So we're going to add $50 to clothing. Next up is our home sinking fund. This is going to cover any sort of home maintenance projects, this covers our property taxes, anything sort of related to the home falls under this home category. Makes sense, right? And we're just going to throw five bucks in there just so as not to neglect it entirely this week. Next we have medical and I also drained our medical fund this week. I took Austin for an eye exam and part of that eye exam included a contact lens fitting and um, that pretty much wiped out all of our medical funds. So 
We're going to need to order him contacts here soon, so we're bulking this guy up as well, and this is actually going to get $100 into our medical fund just so that we are covered with um, everything that we need for his eyes. You know, he's got to get glasses and new contact lenses and all of that, so it's a pretty pricey endeavor. Next up, we have pets, and for our pets, this is cat food and cat litter and vet visits and all all things related to the cats and we're just going to stick five bucks in there again so as not to neglect it entirely school expenses is going to get 50 we got school starting here real quick so we definitely need to um bulk that back up a little bit for spending This is a sinking fund that I have just for any time that I want to shop. I'm a big shopper. I love to spend money. And rather than swipe a credit card when the itch to shop happens, I just set aside a little bit of money every week um, into the spending category for me to be able to do that. Um, we're going to the fair this week. So I definitely want to make sure that we have some money so that we can you know, ride rides, get fair food, that sort of thing. And I think I'm going to pull that money out of spending here. So in order to do that, I need to make sure I have money in there. So we're going to add um, $100 to spending this week. Next up, we have subscriptions. And we keep this sinking fund to cover all of our streaming services. Um... This covers my husband's Audible subscription, Amazon Prime, all of that. And so this is going to get a 20. And lastly, I have taxes. So because I am self-employed, essentially, making a little bit of income from YouTube and now Etsy, um, when those things pay out, they don't withhold taxes. I have to withhold them myself. And so... I need to put some money into my taxes envelope to cover um, the taxes I will have to pay on this Etsy income. So let's figure that out really quickly. My Etsy income was $56.58. And we are going to take 30% of that and stick it into my taxes envelope. So that is $16.97. I'm going to round up and I'm going to stick $17 into my taxes envelope. And that is going to do it for all of my sinking funds. As you can see, I had plenty of room here, plus a line to spare, which is awesome. And I'm just going to add these up really quickly. So we are adding quite a bit of money to our sinking funds this week. Um, it's, a, it's a lot, but I would rather have it set aside and not need it than need it and not have it. So, um, yeah, that's what we're doing. Let me do that again, because I definitely made a mistake there. So 50 plus 5 plus 10 plus 50 plus 5 plus 100 plus 5 plus 50 plus 100 plus 20 plus 17 is 412 dollars going into our sinking funds this week. Just double checking and making sure I didn't leave anything out. Okay, that's not right. So let me add it one more time because I'm getting a different number every time. So 50 plus 5 plus 10 plus 50 plus 50 plus 5 plus 100 plus 5 plus 50 plus 100 plus 20, plus 17, 462. Okay, now that's right. Oy, okay. Moving on, we have my extra debt payments. So one of the main reasons why we sit down and we write a budget every single week is so that we have money to send in extra debt payments. Um, the card we are currently working on is our Lowe's card. 
and from my husband's income, we are going to pay $50 to that Lowe's card. But in addition to that, I have also committed to sending all of my Etsy income as a debt payment. So in order to do that, I need to figure out exactly what I have left. So my Etsy income was $56.58. Minus that $17 we set aside for taxes. So we're going to send $39. Hopefully you guys can see that. $39.58 to Lowe's from my Etsy sales. So this is all because of you guys. So thank you so much for helping me to pay extra to my Lowe's card. And I just want to make sure that I know that this was my Etsy income. And that was $39.58. And let's just get a total really quick. So $39.58 plus $50, $89.58 to my Lowe's card this week, which is so exciting. So the last thing we have to do here then is our totals box, which I have here. I really, really wanted to make sure that I found room in my principal for a totals box because I felt like that was something I had been missing. So what I would do then is write in my income, which I'm going to leave blank here just for the sake of privacy, as I've mentioned, but then we'll write in our checking amount, which we said was 380. So that total goes in here. Our cash envelope total, which is 320, goes in under cash envelopes. 462 for sinking funds and 89.58 under extra debt. So then I would take that income total, subtract the checking, the cash envelopes, the sinking funds, and the extra debt, and that would give me an amount remaining. And that amount then I would stick here under savings. So the category for savings is rollover since we roll over anything that is left over. And we would just take that remaining amount and that is how much we would stick in here as our rollover amount. So that is it for my budget for the first paycheck in August. Cannot believe we are already in August. Can you guys? Amazing how quickly time flies. But that is going to do it for my paycheck budget for my husband's August 3rd paycheck. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I post new budgeting and lifestyle content here on my channel every single week. I'd love to have you come back. Make sure you check out Etsy for my printables if you are interested. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye, friends.